Hey guys, my name is uh, Sean Schnarr, fourth year medical student, and I'm going to be teaching you guys a quick way to determine left or right axis deviation on an EKG. So the first thing here is to take a look at the normal um, placement of leads and their impact on the vectors of depolarization. So normal uh, depolarization vector should be somewhere between uh, 90 degrees, AVF lead placement, and negative 30 degrees, which is AVL lead placement. So you kind of expect the depolarization vector to be somewhere between these two lines. Normally it's somewhere in the middle over here, kind of where lead 2 is placed. That's why when you look at a lead 2 on an EKG, it's normally the one you're most familiar with, with the standard like P, Q, R, S, wave complex. So what you can do with that information, essentially, is know that you should expect your net vector of depolarization from the ventricle to kind of be in this direction, right? So if you, let's put this down. This is kind of our map for today. If you put a line like this, which is what you expect to be your net depolarization vector, you can see that you can kind of break it down by two vectors that combine to make this net vector. So that would be a horizontal one, or your lead one, and a vertical one, which would be your lead AVF. So what can we do with that information about the uh, two vectors? Essentially what we can do is look at the different, the corresponding uh, leads on the EKG and use them kind of as kind of a hint as the amount of depolarization and the strength of the vector in the horizontal direction and in the vertical direction. So what you want to do is kind of look at your lead 1 on the EKG and your lead AVF on the EKG and kind of look at the strength of each vector, which you can do by counting the small boxes that make up the QRS complex, which corresponds to the ventricular depolarization. So. Um, Let's try it with a uh, normal EKG. So here we have a uh, normal EKG. So let's go ahead and look at lead one and then determine the strength of the vector depolarization in the horizontal axis by just counting the boxes, right? This looks like we've got like a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven boxes. Let's go down to our uh, board here. Let's count that off, right? So one, So that's our horizontal vector. Then what we can do is uh, look at our AVF and look at the strength of depolarization in that vector. And if we count the boxes again, that's one, two, three, four, five. So let's go ahead and uh, count and put that down here. So now we have the two vectors, right? So what we can do is essentially draw a line here and here, and basically draw a line corresponding to these two vectors, and we get the degree of depolarization. As you can see, it falls between 90 degrees and negative 30 degrees, so this is normal axis deviation from a normal EKG, which is what we kind of expected. Okay, so we tried this on a normal EKG, so let's try it on some abnormal EKGs. Let's try this one. So let's look at the lead one here, and we can see that the QRS complex is actually upside down, so we're gonna have to use the uh, net vector in the opposite direction, because instead of going to the uh, right, like it's normally supposed to, it seems like it'll be going to the left because the uh, net depolarization vector is upside down. Let's take a look at this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, right? So let's write that down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it's our net horizontal vector. And then let's look at AVF. It looks like we've got 1, 2, 3, 
four, five, six, seven. And that's in the uh, normal vector of ABF we were expecting down, so we'll count this like this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we draw our two lines again. We draw an arrow down. And what we can see is that it doesn't fall between the normal axis of deviation and it's actually deviated to the right. So this is right axis deviation. This EKG was actually of a right ventricular hypertrophy, but you can also see this with uh, hyperkalemia, you can see it with uh, lateral wall MIs and things like that. And then let's try just uh, one more EKG to practice on. So here's another lead one. Let's look, let's count the QRS boxes. So it looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in the upwards direction. So that's what we're expecting. So that'll be to the right. So let's count that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There. And then what we can do is go to AVF. Look at the QRS. It's actually down. So that's in the opposite direction than what we're normally expecting. So let's count these vectors again, or count the uh, degree of polarization. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay. That's actually going to go off our little chart here. It's all right. Kind of get the concept. One there. Put a line here. And I'll see if I can kind of move it up and show you that the net vector is going to be in this direction. And that's going to be, again, outside of our normal axis on the left side. So this is an example of left axis deviation, which can be caused by left ventricular hypertrophy, an inferior wall MI, or a left bundle branch block. Okay, so this was my little technique for helping to determine um, axis depolarization and possible axis deviation from EKGs. Uh, I hope this helps you guys out. Um, it's been a lot of help for me. So.